You ready? Sure. Okay. So the first least bulleted item on the agenda is reviewing the cover letter to post with the MAPC report. And I think that one we have received a few comments. It is under the, uh, I can, let's see. I can call up the, um, the version of it that's in Google Docs if people want to, we can look at it from there. That makes sense. All right. So let me get that. Yeah, it should be. Um, I should have it on the screen. So hold on a second. Let's just. Uh, Does everybody see the letter? Yep. Um, and I will get rid of this www in the middle there. It's just kind of hanging there from a formatting. Um, I think if I recall, I think, I think this version has the comments that Eileen had made and then Ed had made. I don't know if there's any beyond, uh, let's see, because we said Norfolk, actually, uh, wait a minute. So I think we want to change this, right? Downtown? Somebody mentioned changing that, you know, making it uh, consistent, either town center. Yeah, for references, yeah. I think I think it does make sense to say town center. Right. And then plus it makes you more efficient. It might turn back to mobile and maybe a little bit more efficiency on the other side. Right. That's I can't hear whoever's speaking and I don't don't know who it is. Right. We didn't have one second. Whoever was just speaking, it sounds like they're speaking into like a fishbowl. <laughs> yeah, were you, uh, let's see. I'm just gonna go. What was speaking? Were you talking about this letter or something else? All right, this is not gonna be a... well. And when you and when you share screen, when you do the screen share, it doesn't pop up with the person who was speaking. So we, you have to identify yourself because we can't. When you're in the screen share mode, it doesn't make the fa person's face appear. No. So without saying your name and we can't hear you, we would most likely not have any idea who's speaking. All right. Let's try this. So town center. Um, so I think I think overall, if there's any, if there's no major comments to this letter, I just hey. changed town center. The one, two, three, four, fifth line down and says seen in region. So I want to put the word the in between in and region where the blue line is across there. Yeah. Okay. Rich is I maybe didn't save my my comments. This is Janine. Um, and not a big deal. I was just sometimes we hyphenate bylaw and sometimes we don't. Just a nitpicky, but I can go through the final version and, and update that. And then the, the last sentence in that first paragraph starts with the word R as though it's a question, but there's no question mark at the end if you wanted to actually make that a question. 
All right, let's tackle the, I think probably um, I'll just put hyphen bylaws for that comment. That's all right. Josh, what have you, I mean, I've seen it both ways. It's kind of like. I don't think it matters. I just. Yeah, I know. It consistent. looks more clean if we do it consistently the same way in all of the documents and from sentence to sentence. So. Yeah. So the first way we do it is hyphen. So I vote hyphen all the way. All right. Anybody? We'll hyphen and capitalized, right? Is that too nitpicky? Since we're speaking of the specific bylaw. If you want, instead of taking up time to make the actual changes right now, I could just make a list of them as we go and either send them to Rich after the meeting or um, you know, make the changes myself if, if you'd like. We can go through them and I'll just write them down. It might be a little quicker. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna change it to hyphen bylaw. Good point. Um, and then Eileen, what R is this? This was the other one, right? You just said. Yeah, because that's if we start the sentence with R, then it should end up being a question. So it's just kind of an awkward sentence. Well, that's part of. Uh, what was the preceding sentence? Say that again? The preceding sentence is a bit awkward too. But the committee was formed to address resident and property owner concerns that despite the strong regional economy downtown hasn't seen growth that other downtowns have seen in the region. Probably put a comma after economy and then put in the word our, O-U-R. Our downtown hasn't seen growth that other downtowns have seen in the region. But I, you know, I think to Susan's point, it's I don't know that all of us need to be sitting here talking about grammar and punctuation. Yep. And I, I think I think if we generally agree that the idea of the letter is meets the intent of the board, then you know maybe Rich and I or some other people that want to volunteer can be involved with you know checking the grammar and, and being consistent. Um, that makes sense. So I guess as long as you know, the general form and message is, yep. is agreeable. You know, can we vote to proceed? Or so who do we need to vote? Just, we're just agreeing. Yeah. So who wants to, uh, I'll pass it by who? Who's volunteering? We can go I, back. I can, I can do it. I, I thought I did. I just must not have saved. So I'll do it and then open it again and make sure I saved it next time. Um, that's fine. I can do it. Why don't you send it to both me and Janine and Rich and we'll... Okay. All right. I also think it's just in, if you're making a note in case no one noticed it, it says MAPC starting. It should be started. Just make a note of that. So. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm going to... Uh, so one more edit. Vote on it. I'm going to leave it in the hands of Aaron and Janine. If it's good, then we just post it with the report after this instead of seeing it one more time. What do you, what's your, to move this along, what are your thoughts? Is that all right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to close that then. Um, one of the things I know. Uh, oh, Rich, let's just let's talk about that real quick. So, all right, we agree on the letter. We'll agree to a final form in the next couple of days. Then what? Then the um, the letter will be accompany the report again under uh, what's new on the the town of Norfolk website. So it gets back on the, at the top. And then well, I have to, I will be printing copies for public display once we're open again for business. So we're gonna put a copy at the library, a hard copy of the letter and the report. 
then those will be available at town hall and the library. And then when it gets posted on the town website, that'll show up on the Facebook page link. Correct? Is that correct, uh, Kevin? What I'm saying? Yeah, there's direct integration built that anything that you post into the website will automatically create a Facebook post onto the town's Facebook page. And then as a secondary thing, I suppose I could just put it on the closed Norfolk town. If somebody wants to just say something there, you know, like I know you're on there, Aaron, right? Just say, hey. I could I can do it if you want. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, just FYI, it's out there. And then if there's any other thoughts, I don't know how, you know. Um, I can re, I can do like a, an email blast to other boards and committees just that it's, you know, it's out there to reference and to, to take a look at it. I think that's a good idea. Okay. All right. Does the B1 committee have a page under one of the boards? Or does it have its own page? It has, um, has neither. And so these documents that we're discussing today, are they going to be posted to the town website for public yeah, review? So the, the way we're doing it right now, they're on the land use page. So if you look, uh, since we're sharing the screen. Is that where the MAPC report is as well? Yes. Um, so. so it's it's appearing here right now. Mm -hmm. I think that we should make it known because I don't think many people know to look under land use. Where? When we right. post it to the, when we quote unquote post it to the town website, can we just say, you know, for future reference, doc, the B1 committee documents are located under the land use tab? Yeah, we will. So we go to uh, so we land on the homepage. Part of, see this message here. I know it's COVID nineteen, but we'll have we can write it in there as well with the link, so people can. Uh, the only thing is that eventually that's going to get bumped off the front page. I know. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm open to ideas, but I'm not sure of ways within the confines of the website that we have right now to do much better than that. Uh, because I figure, well, I'll say this because we don't have a, you know, a particular, pit, well, over here, we actually don't have, I suppose we could add a B1 under boards and committees. That would be helpful. We should have been there anyway. I know that I know a lot of people who were trying to find the MAPC report couldn't find it because they didn't know to look under land use. I didn't either. That's why I kept saying it's not there. But I mean, who knew to look at where it was? It was just sort of buried. And, um, you know, you don't want people to think we're. If you type in there, Rich, and that search bar will it come up or if you type in even b1 i don't know what the process is for adding under that boards and committees tab but that would be awesome that makes sense right i mean we're a committee we should be under the boards and committees tab right. we don't need to reinvent the website let's just make effective use of it right yep yeah i'll uh I'll find out. Hey, Rich, when you put in the request to have this added, can you go back into land use for a quick second? 
Mm -hmm. Make sure that there's a link there next to Planning Board, Board of Health, Conservation, and Zoning Board for B1 as well. That'll link you back to the committee page. Yep. I'll Thank that. you. Yep. Okay. All right. So I think from a so from a timing standpoint, I'll, I'm going to investigate the, or just find out what I need to do to create a you know committee page here. Obviously, there's some that are outside. There's a Norfolk 150. Put it there, and then we'll put it on land use so it lands all at the same time. Okay. Great. Um, Rich, do you want me to write some of this down so that I'm taking notes I can send you a text or an email just reminding you of the couple of sure. you know, housekeeping type stuff that we're talking about? Sure. That would be helpful. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering, I know we have a particular order. Well, perhaps a particular order. I'm wondering if it's not worth discussing um, the calendar a little bit, jump into the calendar in light of where we are with everything at the moment to review that. Is that, uh, would that be acceptable to do that? I'm sorry, what are you asking? I wanted to touch on the calendar next, actually. Okay. Before we tackle the next agenda item, which is the executive summary, and then the list of issues and alternatives and so forth. So Rich, we can we can absolutely do that if that's the order you want to go in. However, I would my assumption would be our ne our next agenda item would depend on what we come what consensus we come to tonight. Because I know that in the past we have things on the calendar, but we haven't actually ever made any changes that we could vote on or discuss and move forward with. And we talked last time about until we do that, we really can't keep going. So um I mean, we can certainly say what we're going to do the next meeting, but unless we finalize everything tonight, it's not going to matter because we're going to have to revisit this subject again, if that's the case. Yeah, I was going to pull. I was going to pull back just on a broader calendar view, not, and then we can work backwards, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I think we honestly, I, I don't feel like we're going to be in the position to go to a fall town meeting with everything we need to accomplish in the present condition we're under with the COVID-19. I think, and that, and I wanted to just say that up front now, because I think we still have a fair amount of work to do to even get to a fall meeting. And particularly, I think some of the comments that we're going to just discuss as we go forward, I think we need to have, consensus on different elements before we're ready to roll forward. And we're gonna to need to have some good discussion on each point, I think. And I don't think if you, if you bundle it all together, I think November is not feasible. Well, it's kind of hard to say unless we agree on the roadmap. Right, right. that's so, kind of what I was thinking. I mean, are there, are there comments on the roadmap that's there? I mean, do people share Rich's opinion? Are there edits we need to make to this? What's uh, what's the what's the group's opinion on the calendar that's on the screen? I th I personally think town meeting is almost six months away. If anything, having having virtual meetings is almost easier because you can just join into their meeting and present to them, you know, on and to another board. Um, you know, and per personally, then I think it is trying to schedule a meeting spot in town hall, a virtual meeting is almost easier. If we can, you know, agree either to this tonight or in the next meeting, what the changes are going to be and finalize what, what we want the Warren articles to say after that, it's just presentation. It's really not, I'm not saying that that's not a lot of work. It is. The hard part is having everyone agree on what we're going to present to move forward. Right. Um, and I think that it all comes down to how things go tonight as to whether or not we'll be ready for November. 
if we agree and we have a consensus, I don't see why we wouldn't be ready for November. And, you know, personally, I don't really see a benefit to being having this move go for another year from now, because that's when, if we don't do it in November, that's when it would be, it would be next May. I don't think we need to wait a year. So we'll, we'll jump back in and see how this goes. Then. Rich, what were your uh, concerns related to the impacts of COVID on our ability to move forward? I don't, my concern is, um, you know, for one of the things that Aaron talked about, we want to talk a little bit tonight was having a presentation to, so at, at town meeting coming up. Well, from the earlier discussion, so we're at June 9th right now for town meeting. And with the present budget situation going on, with the un uncertainty of it, there's the possibility that we're, um, you know, we could very well be in into summer. And if that were to be the case, that our first meeting out to the public will be, um, you know, in the summer. And then some of the other meetings that we were going to have, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Zoom meetings are great in some respects, but, you know, face-to-face -face dialogue on some of this stuff can't get substituted by Zoom meetings, quite honestly. Um, by, the, by the same token, we can't sit on our hands and do nothing for a year, right? So all we can do is move forward what we have. So no, I know. Right so I'm not, I'm not suggesting not do anything, by the way, okay? It's just I don't want to what I don't want to have happen is we're into um, changes to the bylaw. We, we make some edits and we don't have time to give people ample time to go through it. And it feels rushed again because of. All right. So let's, let's talk to that real quick, Rich, right? So tonight we were going to try and quickly talk through all of the items and then the calendar shows a deeper dive into the first three items in May. So it was a presentation of the MAPC report to the town in the spring to as public as we can with the MAPC report. It wouldn't be anything other than a presentation of the report. Right. We, we wouldn't be talking about the warrant items or anything. It's just simply Josh making up or the MAPC making a presentation of their findings. Correct. Right. Then July gets into the next three items. Right. And then we, we come up into June and we, we talk about a warrant, agreeing on a warrant. So we're, you know, three, three complete plus months away from agreeing on a warrant. Let's, uh, well, you, you sound, I, I, you, you sound very optimistic. So I'm going to go with your, uh, inclination that we're going to have consensus on all these items and we'll be rolling forward. So let's, let's get started. I think that, uh, oh, I'm not, we may not have consensus tonight, but we've got three months to come up to, to come to a consensus, right? I would like to think that between us, we can agree to disagree or agree to agree and draft some agenda items and move forward. Right. Yes. But but I'm not sure about the legalities of this, but I can say for myself, speaking only for myself, with the meetings being Zoom meetings for the foreseeable future, I would prefer to have additional meetings in between these meetings than I would to extend this until next May, which is our only other option if we aren't ready for November. Having a year from now, when we've already had a year from when it was supposed to be on the warrant to begin with, I think is is crazy. Um, I mean, if if need be, after tonight, if we need to have another discussion and people need to, you know, take some time to do some research, then let's schedule another meeting for two weeks from now. I don't, you know, see why we would need to put it off until next spring. I just don't. Okay. Um, obviously, when you're talking about in-person meetings, 
there are so many boards that have meetings that the rooms in town hall are being used. And I understand that, but right now it's, that's not the case. And I also feel like our meetings, the last two meetings we've had, we've had four or five town people in our meetings. I don't recall ever having four or five people in any of our in-person meetings. Now, they may not speak up as much as they would. I found from the advisory meetings, people aren't speaking and debating as much back and forth over Zoom as they would have in person. But I find that they're better attended by town people because it's so much easier to just open your computer, put it on, and then continue, you know, turn the video off and listen to everything versus, and, you know, continue about your day. So Mm -hmm. I think that there's a workable solution to keep us on the November town meeting and not put this off, even if it means having additional Zoom meetings in the meantime, Okay. as long as we're allowed to do that. Sure. Yeah, we are. I mean, yeah, we're not really too bound by the meeting room uh, public place at the moment. Um, all right, so then we'll, uh, then I, it seems to me then discussing some of the uh, list of issues and ways to address some of the issues that have been raised feeds better into the executive summary than the reverse. I mean, I, I'm open to hear suggestions, but it seems like. Well, I agree, Rich. Let's. Let's agree on our general goal and direction as a committee before we get into the individual uh, items, because one would like to think that we're going to use the executive summary to guide the decisions we make for the items. So if, if we're, it seems like we're in general agreement that the calendar on the screen is reasonable enough draft for now, we'll, we'll move through our discussion. And if we need to revisit the calendar, then we will. Otherwise, we'll move forward with what's, what's there. Okay. Right, so maybe we, we move on to the executive summary now. Mm-hmm. Rich, whatever happened with, I, I thought we had a thing with sewer that you were looking at. We do, we are. So the, the sewer study hasn't started yet. It's going to start. We're just trying to finalize the contract on it. So yep. I think the, well, honestly, I think in reality, the sewer study and its work is going to be somewhat simultaneous and some most likely not. Um, but is there somewhere you think that could fall on this timeline? Yeah, I think it's probably um, probably in the July time frame. They're doing the, they're collecting data. They've, they've reviewed all the, they being Wilbur and Curran, they're, they're at least grabbing all the data they need, the GIS files, the design plans for the plant. They're getting the back, you know, the background uh, information that they need and they're compiling. So they're going to be, uh, they'll be ready to get rolling soon. So I think probably July would be uh, a good a good time frame, I think. I'll give you better, get a better number, <clears throat> or a better time for you once we get that contract signed this week. They can't actually do a study on usage right now, can they? Because so people are home full time. It's it's very different from typical usage. No, they can because they're they're not they're using published usage flows for the you know, the, the um, title five. So this isn't, this is not, you know, there are out. So d- in title five for the state DEP for septic system regulations, there are design flows for different use types. So they can, they won't, the fact that we're not, um, you know, not using as much at the moment isn't really an issue for them to do their study. It's just an equation. Yeah, is, is all it is. Right. You know, and, you have X employees times gallons per day or. And then the flow data that they're going to be using is already past water consumption data. It has, so it's years, it's subsequent years before this time frame. So it's not, right. yeah, right. it's not based on anything right now. If I, if I could jump in real quick, but Martha and Chris have their hand raised too. But 
before we get to them real quick. Devin, just out of curiosity, what, what do you see as the tie between the sewer study and what we're doing here? Well, I think as soon as we get, you know, that sewer study, I think we should immediately talk about it to see how that, you know, could impact any of our decisions. But I, I, just speaking, I guess, over simply, the sewer study would encourage a higher volume than we're recommending currently, let alone after we have discussion. So the sewer is to me just another option for the developers i don't know that it would significantly change any of the recommendations that we're headed towards i, I don't know if people see that differently but yeah, so, so the no it's a fair point because this the sewer right now essentially is really only available to the properties that are on liberty lane and uh, meeting house. So the sewer is not presently outside that area. Um, depends upon how this work goes. There might, well, as we get into this, um, maybe I think it'll be more uh, relatable. Is if if one of the recommendations going forward is to create a core, a more intermediate core then that sewer may be related to that inner core and not the whole B1 in its entirety. So that would be a whole different, so then anybody outside the, an immediate area, the center core would be on septic system. So the sewer study wouldn't mean anything to them. I think to Aaron's point though, um, what Aaron was talking about was previously we had been kind of leaning on the, the natural existing limitations for volume and for site usage that would be associated with septic. And I think that once we started talking about not leveraging those natural limitations anymore um, and instead putting some caps on some of these things, I think we eliminated the impact of having septic versus sewer. So I think if we're going to move forward with some of the recommendations that we previously talked about, I'm sure we'll get into that as we go into the nitty gritty here. Um, I, like, I think Aaron's trying to allude to the impact of having a widened sewer sewage area uh, isn't really too much of an impact to what we're doing here. At least that's how I see it. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Right now, the, the sewer capacity is 30,000 gallons a day, and it's already allocated amongst four different properties. So without a, you know, expansion of a wastewater treatment plant, um, it's, it's still, it's, it's more limiting than what somebody could do on a, on a piece of property. The point of the study? What's that? I, I'm sorry, but I hate to interrupt, but wasn't that the point of the study to look at that? Ex the point of expanding sewer? What the impact of an expanded sewer treatment plant would be to the B1 district. Yes, that that's part of it. Yes, that was that was part of it. So, I, so I have to say, how would that not be relevant to our discussion and our decisions moving forward? All right, I could I could speak to that since I'm the one who brought it up. Do it wouldn't be relevant because we're talking about putting other caps and restrictions in the zoning that would make the density allowed by a sewer treatment plant irrelevant. Again, speaking simply and freely. Oh, I'm not sure I follow that logic, but I look forward to the presentation. Okay. Is that, was that your question, Chris, that you raised your hand for? Yes. Okay. I'll add to that, Chris, that the the additional benefit to the sewer at that point would be that there is a town infrastructure. So private developers would not need to do their own wastewater infrastructure. Right. So there'd still be a benefit. Just what ideally wouldn't support the density that a sewage treatment plant would support. There'd be there'd be other financial and developmental benefits beyond density. 
that's what I was looking for from the study was something that laid that out. These are the limitations. That's the benefit of the study. I believe that's the goal of the study. We just, we need to get it off the starting blocks. Agreed. I just worry about that timeline of July versus November. Um, you know, the history moving forward has been, it has been difficult to sort of gather the information and then articulate it to the people in a timely fashion. That seems like a tight timeline. Yeah, I think if you don't, if you don't mind, let me just in, for one moment pull pull something up. Maybe help. At least it'll help me explain what I'm trying to say. Maybe others will. Uh, can you see this on the screen? See this, this blue line here? One potential, and this is what I would like the committee to look at, is that this creates an inner core in the B1, which doesn't exist in this fashion today. If you look, this is the the B1 inner core here is kind of maroonish color. And then the outer is over here and then it goes further down Main Street. One thing I would like folks to consider is some of the comments that have been received through this process was, you know, we understand the you know, the potential benefits, a higher density, et cetera, but where that's being planned for future has us concerned. So for example, this area over here, which is near you guys, Chris and Martha, which is on Boardman Street. Uh, this scenario would be in a B1 outer core. So the sewer may be focused on trying to create higher density within the core and the outer core the sewer doesn't go there. So then the outer core is serviced by septic. So the limitation of those properties is based on septic because this, this property here, these properties here, all those properties there are part of the wastewater treatment plan, which is 30,000 30, gallons a day. These, the condos up on Meany House already have a certain amount of flow. So without utilizing some undercapacity or expanded capacity, there's not a, a magical number of additional sewer capacity unless, it, unless it's created by either- Before, sorry to cut you off, but I mean, the whole point we're doing this study is to itemize this stuff for discussion, right? So I think we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but to Rich's point, you know, do we do an inner, inner district and an outer district and further manipulate our density controls? Which, right, but I guess making those arguments without the study seems uh, cart before the horse for me. So, um, and then waiting until July to have said information doesn't leave a lot of time to sort of digest and process. So, uh, perhaps Chris, but I would I jump in and say again I think once you once we start looking at the densities, we can we can create an inner and an outer district. To, in the discussion of densities, regardless of sewer, sewer would just support the guidelines and recommendations that the committee is making. So then we don't need the study. Why are we doing it? Because it's still a benefit to the town and the developments. So again, I, I the it seems like a circular discussion to me. Of it's, 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 we well, really need the study to have all the information but we don't need the information to make a decision. So. Right. I'm, I'm not saying we need the information to make a decision. Right. I'm saying is as we get through discussing each of the items, I think you'll find that we don't need the information to make a decision. The developers will need the information to make a more educated and beneficial plan for their town, for the town and their. And their but projects. we don't need to consider those facts now. 
Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We have to figure that out as we talk through this over the next three months. I, I'm not trying to say we shouldn't get the, the plan. We certainly should. We've been trying. Aaron, to get I'll it. be honest. It's, I don't know if it's just your. Chris, you're so cutting in and out a little me, bit. But I, I, I'm struggling with your microphone. I think it's you because you're cutting in and out. Your voice is cutting in and out on my end. Okay. Aaron, clearly. Thank you. I don't know if I, for anyone else. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. So the study, yes, the study is relevant to what we're doing, Chris. Absolutely. It's not, but it's not, it's going to better tell us in a way what we can do as far as trying to accommodate some density within, within properties that are within town center that are already served by sewer and maybe additional sewer capacity would help them for development, redevelopment. I, I thought, and I might be misremembering discussion from many, many months ago. Mm -hmm. I thought that this, in order for us or whomever to reallocate the wastewater flow to, to expand that to, the, to other buildings in, the, in that district. I thought that having the study was a requirement to like prove out the flow and then as an input. I, I thought that was part of the reason why we wanted or needed to have the study. It is. So okay. not I think just I, I'm just raising that because one yeah. of Chris's can, can comments was like why are we doing it if we don't need yeah. it? But I I can thought I or my understanding is there are actual other needs for the information as an input into this, the whole process, like step back far and look at the process. Well, let me yeah. make this recommendation. Why don't, why don't we put sewer on the agenda for next meeting, right? And Rich can do some homework. We'll collect our thoughts and we'll address it in a more educated fashion at the next meeting. Okay, I think that's a, worthwhile thing to do and uh, okay so what I was suggesting before maybe didn't, I didn't explain myself well enough it seems as if this document that Josh has at least put together the matrix we might have some additional recommendations that would go into the executive summary so it seems like we should maybe discuss some of those options before we Added an executive summary. And the matrix, by the way, is very similar to the information that Aaron had in his document as well. All right, so why don't we talk about the summary? Why don't we look at the summary before we talk about changing it? The executive summary? Yeah. Okay. And, um, and the people at home may or may not have, probably haven't read it because I don't think it's shared. I think I commented on it. I meant, sorry, when I said the people at home, I didn't realize everybody oh. on the meeting was at home. <laughs> <laughs> the, other. the people not on the committee. Sorry. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, Rich, can you make it bigger? Like zoom in? Just, I, I can't, I mean, I have my own copies because I printed them off, but I'm just letting, like, I can't read them, any of that. There we go. That's good. Is that more readable, you think? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, Rich, this is the itemized executive summary. There was actually a paragraph written executive summary as well. Do you mean the discussion? No. Discussion points. Yeah. Yeah, we have one called B1 B1 zoning committee discussion, which is paragraph style. And right. then we have executive right. summary, which is bullets. Right. All right. So discussions up. All right. So again, just as a background, the discussion is meant to capture all of the comments and discussions of the committee over time. The executive summary is meant to be a, a one or two page summary for a quick review for people that don't want to read pages and pages of notes. 
right? Yeah. So the executive summary is a summary of this paragraph statement. So right. I think if we start with this paragraph statement, it might, might be more beneficial. Yes. You. Yeah, I agree. Sorry about that. Wrong, wrong document. All right. So we'll uh, start a building scale. Well, no, we're just talking about this, the mission statement, right? All right, again, as a committee, we need a way to be able to make decisions. Our mission statement, our goal, it would be helpful to agree upon before we get into the individual items, right? So did, has anybody, I, I, does anybody have any comments on the content and recommendations and summary of the mission statement that we should discuss before we get into individual items? For me, other than uh, question. editing it for grammar, um, which it needs to be, which needs to be done in this committee mission statement as well. Um, I don't have an issue with the mission statement itself. Uh, question for the group, is it worth it to cite the resource that dictates what future population growth is defined as, which I believe is our housing production plan, Rich, if I'm not mistaken? I think it's, it is worth, yes. I don't. I just need to fact check the source, but yes. I think it'd be helpful for people who wanna go back to kind of put a number to that. That's my only comment though. So beyond grammar, is there, what's written in here is, workable for everybody? As far as this mission statement. And do people feel it's strong enough to allow us to make decisions when we don't agree? We can agree that maybe we don't support it personally, but in an effort of supporting the missions of the committee, we can agree that it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see anything that would contradict that. All right, great, we're cruising. Okay. All right, so then I think what that leaves, Rich, is just trying to get through the individual items, right? Correct. Which I think you should probably use the executive summary for because a lot of these things in, in the discussion have already been changed or proposed to be changed in the executive summary, which might make it a little bit easier and we don't have to. Right, so let me, let me give a little bit of background on what Susan's getting at. So the executive summary, again, was meant as a, a current working document of the board's recommendations. It, it's not intended to be a, a, a historical document. The, the discussion document is meant to be the historical document that, that tries to track all of the questions, FAQs, and conversations that the board has had, right? And then, and then that document, again, is summarized as the executive summary. So for the sake of starting the conversation, it's probably beneficial, I agree with Susan, to use the executive summary. Um, ideally, as we move forward and we identify um, spokespeople for each of these items, each spokesperson would be editing their, their discussion item and keeping track of all of the discussions and items, right? Again, summarized by the executive summary. So Rich, if we could switch back to, uh, that the executive summary to, to talk through the items. Is it all right, that size? Yeah. Okay. Okay, back to scale. 
I think if um, if you go up, scroll up the page a little bit towards the top. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you have to click where it's highlighted in yellow. I think there's a comment that I put that I inserted. I think it's showing up maybe off to the right. Or if you let me see if I can shrink it. I don't know how to. There it is. So you can see Ed's comment, my comment. Yeah. Over on so the side. Is it still readable with this this Zoom uh, 150? Yeah. So we really see both. Okay. All right. All right. So this is uh, sorry, Ed's comment. I think that's a fair point. Conclusion there. Well, you, I mean, technically you have in, increased commercial tax base and it's a less tax burden for you when that's actually incorrect. We don't have a commercial tax base in this town. Everyone pays the same tax rate based on uh, square footage. The only difference would be if it was a restaurant and they had a meal sales tax. It wouldn't, or, or liquor or any other item that could be taxed separately. But as far as a, a residential versus a commercial, we have a single tax rate in this town. So I would take that out because that's actually not true. And I don't think a lot of town people know that because then when you talk, a lot of town people say, oh, I want businesses here to help offset our taxes. And it doesn't. It, it means no different than building a house of the same size, except for you don't build 20,000 square foot houses. I understand that. But Susan, I'm going to I'm going to disagree with you there because the assessors told us that commercial property is is of a higher value and therefore is is a is a is a higher producing revenue property and it does decrease the tax burden to the town people. That very well be true, but Blythe said at the very last meeting that we discussed this at, her exact words were, we have a single tax rate in this town. Okay. We can, we can, can I, can I the jump in there, guys? By saying that the tax rates are the same, right? So. Right. Yeah, right. Just, so, but, the so both of, I, well, Susan is absolutely correct. We only have one tax rate in our town. We do not have a split rate which would have a higher contribution from existing commercial base. But the way that this bullet is worded is increased commercial tax base, not rate. So if you look at the pie graph of what contributes to our tax levy, right now it's about 96% residential and 4% commercial, which gets us to one number. If we were to take a number and say, we need X amount of money to offset incoming for our expenses, if commercial tax base was increased to 8% or 9%, in theory, that would reduce the residential burden. So the statement is true. Um, I don't know how much of an offset that would be, given the uh, percentages and numbers that we're working with here. But uh, the statement is factual. Let me be a little bit more clear then. It needs to be clear to residents that there is only one tax base, because I don't think that is common knowledge for the average person in town. That is something that we happen to know because we serve on committees and boards and it's discussed at our meetings, but most town people, when I tell them that, they had no idea that residences and commercial would pay the same tax rate. So I just, I'm simply saying that <coughs> since that's what most people think, I would want to make sure that is clear to people so that they aren't um, misunderstanding what we're trying to say. I don't know how you want to word that, but I just am saying, I think it should be made clear that, you know, the way in which it would help offset, not just saying that the, you know, commercial would bring in additional tax revenue. Well, so would residential. I mean. So it, my recommendation, Susan, is we put that in our discussion comments on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on okay. an item. Yeah, so I think it's in there somewhere. Uh, perhaps change the word base out with contribution. That would work. Can we, can we go down to scale? Scale. Good. All right, so what I tried to do here was just summarize what building scale was dealing with, the allowable footprint of a building on a site. Um, 
The gray is what our existing zoning language has. The previously proposed is what was on the warrant a year ago. And then current recommendation is based on discussion that we've heard in the last year. No. Again, these are summaries for the history and the questions behind each of these items. You would need to go to the discussion point. I'm not saying we do that now. Just saying, right? It, it when we were going for the warrant, there were no, there were no uh, maximum areas. So the the current item here for discussion is adding a maximum building area at 25,000 square feet, right? And if you go to the discussion, you'll see that there's a number of buildings in town that are in the neighborhood of 20,000 square feet, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know that we wanna get deep into the discussion now. I think the point is to say, is this recommendation going in the right direction? Are there other things we should consider, et cetera? Well, it, it depends. Is, is the 25,000 that is being proposed, is it, per lot or is it per acre within that lot? It's any building. It's a building. So right, but if the building spans over two lots, is that 25,000 or would that be 50,000? No, it's any building. If it's a, if you could fit on a four acre lot, if you could fit two 25,000 square foot buildings, you could have two of them. If you could fit three of them, you could fit three of them. So it's, Right, but again, let's. Uh, I want to be careful with that, Rich, because we keep talking about pie in the sky possibilities. There's only four sites in town that support multiple buildings. Two of them are currently 40B projects, right? One of them is being proposed as a as a residential development, and the other one is the stop and shop property. So there's really only one property we're talking about in town that supports multiple buildings. Unless you combine lots. Unless you combine lots, but even then. There's limited numbers. Okay, so here's the thing. Aaron, I, have to come, I have to come back to this point of that that's what people have been asking for from the beginning of what does that look like? I don't understand why that's so unreasonable. It's not unreasonable, Chris, and we can, we can have those conversations when we get to the map, I think. All right, I look forward to it. Yep. But I will, my, my comment in this, it, relatively now is we do need to kind of pick some pathways how we're going to address these or we're not going to get to november we can't just so we need to say which is agreeing with you agreed we can't just it's either it, it, a piece of property might can be combined not combined is is the scale of a twenty five thousand square foot is it too big and then we should go a little bit lower and yeah. Yes. Rich, I, I agree with you 100%, Rich, but we can't have that discussion now until we get through the general opinion of the board, the committee on all of the points, right? In order to break down and have the, the minute discussions of each of the items, I, I think we need to have spokespeople assigned tracking the discussion and taking notes and educating themselves to be able to defend and uh, present the information to the public when we get to the town meeting, right? I look forward to that meeting. I, I kind of disagree <laughs> in a way. I, I, think, I think you need to start funneling this down. We do, we're, Rich, but we don't even have fundamental agreement on what the items are yet, right? I, so we, look, we're not saying that this is it and we'll move forward. We're just saying that based on the feedback we've heard over the last year, this recommendation is going in the right direction. Which is put a cap that it's some number and maybe a special permit to go above it, right? Is that, yeah, that, yes, that's and maybe says, a yes. discussion about what are the potential lots out there that are directly abutting each other, that potential of their combination has impact A. That's all I'm looking for. It, it, I keep hearing it's super limited. It's only a couple of sites. Well, then that should be easy math to push out and say, hey, here are the possibilities. 
I'm not asking for every scenario. Let's just talk top five. Understood, Chris. And I think that'll be a topic of discussion when this is a deep dive item at our next meeting, according okay. to the schedule. All right. So building height. This process. Say that again. I didn't hear the comment. I think it cut out. I think that was an internal discussion before they went on mute. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so building height. Next item. All right. So again, just talking about the discussion of what's on screen, right? We had talked about changing the building height to 46 feet, the middle of the slope measured to the middle of the slope of the roof. Allowable number of stories would be three and a half. Uh, no change to the, the general decorative feature language and no change to the facade detailing uh, buildings lock language, building look language. Uh, it's worth noting in this uh, item that uh, the town seems to be moving forward with uh, general agreement on the design guidelines, which is a separate discussion, but plays into this discussion. Um, so the uh, the current recommendation here starts to talk to something that Rich mentioned, which do you call it an inner and outer uh, uh, district or do you base it on lot size? So uh, the proposal here is to say uh, for lots smaller than 70,000 square feet, keep the existing bylaws as they're written. For lots that are larger than 70,000 square feet, we uh, make the following changes, right? Change the allowable height to 46 feet measured the middle of the roof change the allowable number of stories to three and a half, uh, require a minimum of 12 foot clear, uh, floor, uh, finish floor to bottom of structure at the street level, right? And then no changes to the general look of the buildings. Can I, can I raise an issue about the height? I've raised it several times that I don't understand. If, if, a, building, if a maximum building is 46 foot and the, and the decorative can bring it up to 80 foot, that means we're gonna allow a steeple of 34 feet. Well, I think we can. Does that make sense? So if a building is 25 foot, we can, we'll allow a steeple of 55 feet tall. And again, I, I think that might be a, a, an item for the deep dive, but you know that's that's a number that's in the existing bylaws, and that's intended to that's intended to cover things like churches and cupolas and thing and decorative features that are that are encouraged for variety downtown. So, um, I, I think the short answer is yes, and the, the, the long answer is it's it's a discussion that we need to get into. I have a question. Go ahead, uh, thank you. So the uh, the 46 foot height, uh, just as a point of reference, how would that relate to the new bank building? Uh, is that would the would that bank building, including its roof detail and the allowable use that they took advantage of, if any, uh, does that fall within this criteria or would or is that beyond that? Rich, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the. 18 Union Street building meets the existing zoning guidelines, right? So it allows 40 feet to the roof peak, et cetera. So up in the gray above, Chris. So we'd be basically be saying that the 18 Union Street could be made six feet taller. Could be six feet taller, but that would be the max without somebody coming and then asking for a variance to go above that. So. Right. Chris, it. Well, the, the one the bank the bank property is only two is what we would consider a two and a half story, meaning it's one story of business with one story of residential on top. What they're proposing in this is three and a half, which would mean one story of commercial on the bottom and two stories of residential on top. However, that looks whether that's a two story townhouse or it's a if it's two one story apartments. I'm not sure. It doesn't specify. I personally don't think that will pass um, through the town. I think it's, it's. I think we're setting ourselves up for failure on that one. I don't think anyone in this town wants a three and a half story residential building in the middle of town. 
but and so Susan, real quick, just, just to, a voice of one person. So we, we do know a little bit what that looks like because the design guidelines have some uh, buildings diagrams for reference. Uh, I don't know if we want to pull those up now, uh, but it, Rich, if they're not posted to the site, we should probably get them posted. Uh, a question, is the third story within the roof line? The, the half story is. The half story. Yeah. Rich, can you pull up the design guidelines or? Sure. So right now the, the existing zoning bylaw is three stories. That building at Union Street happens to be a two and a half story. But right now the bylaw does allow three stories up to 40 feet by right. And then up to 46 for the peak of the roof by special permit. All right, so that's a pretty good picture right there because it shows you 18 union and the uh, and the proposed building, right? That you got to screw, scroll down a little, Rich. One more page. No, give me this no page. you're good right there, right where you were, Rich. Okay. Yeah, that's well, that's town hall at the top. Sorry, oh. but it's same similar idea as 18 union with with a proposed building. 18 unions in here though. You want to look at it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, is it, I don't know if we have it. Yeah, so I mean, Town Hall and 18 Union are pretty similar in terms of stories and expression, right? I think it's helpful to see the next page, which shows, which shows existing with proposed, right? So the picture is the existing allowable and the proposed is the graphic diagram below. And how close to the sidewalk would that be allowable in this district? Is that 19 feet or is it closer? Uh, I don't remember, but that comes up later in the conversation. So six, six feet? Six feet of the sidewalk and 46 to the peak. It can be if the sidewalk's like the back of the right of way, then it would be six feet from the back of the sidewalk. But if the, you know, it depends on the. That's also okay. discussed in this document. Yeah. Um, but again, I I don't want to get stuck in this document because it'll take the rest of the meeting. I, no, I me either. I'm just trying right, to get yeah. an idea of the scale. So a full story taller than the bank building, just to be clear. Correct. The bank is two and a bank. half, and the really is three and a half. Right. The bank. Yep. The bank. Right there. Yep. It's two and a half. All right, so it would add another level of apartments and then the roof line. So it'd be three and a half. I, I thought the point was to try and bring in those roof lines and so forth. Are they still able to do that, adding that story? Or does that sort of bring you into that flat top building? Uh, the, 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 the flat top is still the language to prevent flat tops is still in there, Chris, and that that's the point of raising the 46 feet. Uh, you need a little bit more height in order to get that full uh, half story. Right. So we're okay. increasing from three stories to half a story to three and a half stories by 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 bylaw. We're only adding half a story. Um, but we we added that six feet to the middle of the slope, which gives you gives you the height to keep all of the variation of the roof and still get that extra story. So I, uh, let's see, so point taken here. I mean, I think, so this we're gonna definitely have to, if we're not digging in deep tonight, we gotta definitely dig in deep because I think quite frankly, um, Something seems to be better than nothing. I think three and a half is going to be a tall tale order here, but let's just. Yep. So the, the big reintroduction in this item is, 
you know, is there some sort of an inner or an outer zone or is there a large site, small site designation, mm -hmm. right? Something we need to decide on as a committee. Correct. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. All right, so we'll come back to it. Uh... Right, so residential density, uh, again, this is essentially how many housing units you can put on a lot, right? So the uh, previously proposed was changed 16 units to 16 units per acre. Uh, and then we need to clean up some of the language for legal reasons. And uh, Rich, if you keep scrolling down, right? So the proposal is, is to keep it from 16 units to 16 units per acre and basically the same. And the logic behind keeping it the same is, is if you look at the map and the sizes in town, that uh, the potential development is, is, is not uh, scary to some people. So again, this is hard again to have. Uh, I'll, I'll jump out in front of Chris's question. You really need to have a map to talk about how many acre sites there are in town. There aren't that many. So very few sites will have 16 units on them because there are very few over acre sites, four to be exact, three of what, two of which are being developed, three of which is one of which is being proposed, one of which is still empty. And just to add in the comment that I know Janine had here on the side, I think it was. So yes, yeah, so the, the per site limitation without uh, sewer is 10,000 gallons per day based on um, by the five design flow rates, anything above 10,000 gallons a day is a wastewater treatment plant. So effectively, it's, it's the regulatory cap of 10,000 gallons per site. Rich, have they recommended changes to that at the Board of Health level? So they are, and the number that I just told you, I mentioned you, 10,000 is is title five so if it if the board of health doesn't change the regulations to match up with title five then it would be about 50 percent more per dwelling so essentially instead of 110 it's i think it's 165 per you per dwelling unit so that would be the cap that's a big what's that Well, that's a significant change. Yes, yes, and the rationale. So, Rich, so how many how many units per acre do you need to have to get to that ten thousand gallon cap, Rich? It's roughly. Uh, um, so it's really bedrooms, but so it's ninety bedrooms. 10,000 gallons. So it's, it's, so it's more than 16 units per acre. Right. So the 16 units per acre is a greater limitation than the sewer, the sewer capacity. Significantly. Yeah, it's more restricting, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. And then if you, um, again, if we couple it with with commercial, commercial has got to be within that flow rate as well. So, you know, if you have a restaurant, retail, et cetera, that's going to drop down the number of dwelling units you can have because you've got, you've got to all make it match under that, that maximum flow. So ultimately, commercial becomes less financially viable and residential becomes increasingly more. Yes, which is which is the whole reason for this anyway, because the current 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 trends are not for commercial; they are for residential. Um, it, it, it's different. Agreed. Different. It, it'll be different in a different decade. You know, it, ten years ago, it wasn't residential; it was commercial. Ten years from now, it very well may be back to being commercial. We don't know. We don't have a crystal ball right now. Developers won't build unless they can build residential. Yeah, there's, there's, um, somebody can, you know, it's a, it's a matter of 
So part of it's the economics of the market, what what somebody could build out commercially without residential. Um, and, you know, there's pretty fair discussion of, you know, market viability of commercial, just straight commercial on a piece of property, not <clears throat> without residential, how viable that is. When you add in the residential, the residential makes a mixed use project more viable economically because there's an offset from a- For the, for the developer. For the developer. It's also, a, it's also a incentive for a developer to develop mixed use in downtown, in, in a, any downtown. So yeah, there's a trade-off that you have residential associated with, but for somebody to ground up, build a mixed use building, which may provide some of the commercial uses, not only for the folks living there, but other people in town that would like to see happen. That's kind of the economic offset. Agreed. And I think that's, that was my hope of what this was all about is somebody laying out what's the trade. Uh, here's what we're going to give and, and here's what we're going to get. Um, and the reluctance to drill down on the details up to this point um, is frustrating. So I, I can at least say that I did reach out to some developers to get a general cost for development from a, um, a ground up. So if I was to go buy, uh, you know, say Chris, and you had a piece of property in town center that I wanted to buy from you um, to put up a mixed use building, a number for, for Norfolk is probably acquisition cost of 20, 35,000 to 40,000 per unit residential to do a mixed use building. So in other words, if you take that. It, Rich, again, you know, again, we're trying to, much to Chris's frustration, Right now, we're trying to avoid a deep dive mm -hmm. into the details, right? Because we need to we need mm -hmm. to be able to track the conversations better and be prepared to have them. So, you know, right. under, understood that we need to do present comparison data and cost benefit analysis, and it's coming, right? Okay. Where is this we're coming back? This may change, stay the same. Is there any? Do you all, does the board always allow um, special permits? I mean, like, can we remove the language that says, I mean, I guess my point is, is if we're going to give up and say, okay, fine, you can have 16 units, 16 per acre or 18 or whatever the number is that we've decided on. Can we remove the language that says unless by special permit and not allow a special permit to add more apartment units? Susan, I think I think the reason that's there is because uh, you don't want to cut off uh, developers that come in with beneficial proposals that may not meet your zoning guidelines, right? So, say a say a say a proposal came in at 17 units per acre, and it was a fantastic proposal for the town. It hit all the bells and whistles. The only thing it didn't hit was 16 units per acre. It came in at 17 units per acre. We wouldn't want to tell that developer he couldn't go forward with that simply because he didn't have 16 units per acre if every other part of that development was beneficial to the town. So that that out, I'll call it, is there to allow you know the appointed boards in town to exercise some of their discretion on you know whether a whether a proposal is beneficial to the town or not in consideration with all of the, you know, zoning guidelines that exist. It's a, it's a special consideration. Okay. I, I, I don't agree with that. I hear what you're saying. I understand the logic behind it, but you know, when boards change and the whims of boards change and, you know, to say that it's, you're leaving something up to the planning board. 
or the zoning board, I should say, um, when we're doing all of the work to come up with what is the best number for the town, then to say, well, but unless you see differently and do what you want. I mean, the whole point is that this is what the town is going to vote on. If you allow special permits on every single one of these things, then why are we even bothering? Why don't we just say, all here's a guideline, but all zoning is left up to the zoning board. Do what you want, do what you see fits for the next decade and we'll, you know, we'll worry about it later. I mean, if we're asking the town to vote on this and we're saying it's not gonna exceed 16 or it's not gonna exceed 18, and we are convincing them to get on board with something they don't really want because we're saying this is the only way we're gonna get a developed downtown area outside of 40B projects. So, hey, come and get on board with us. And then just to have, and, and I would venture to say it's very rarely just one unit and it's a perfect build. Uh, my guess is it's more likely, hey, we, we can only build 16, but we're gonna build 23. Uh, <laughs> right, so, but I, I mean, again, I just, I, Again, there's four lots that can support developments this large, right? Two of them are being developed. One of them's on its way. So it's not well, an infinite amount of times you're going to have this conversation. It's you're, you're speaking of only available land, correct? Yeah, okay, so fine. So say all... say developers come in with three developers come in and want to combine six lots. That's still only three discussions. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Who owns the existing buildings on the? On on lots in the downtown area can choose at any time to tear down those buildings and build something else, just like they've done with the Borks, you know, 194 Main Street. Agreed, but all of those lots are still small. Mall. Well, I'm just saying he owns that strip mall. The person who owns the Linda's Variety strip mall could decide to do the same thing and, and tear it down and build apartments and commercial, you know, there. It, just because there's not anything, the, just because there's something already on the lot, we've already seen there's something on the lot at 194 Main and they're ripping it down and building something new. So to say that there's only one lot or two lots is disingenuous because things can be changed around. The person on the corner of Boardman and Main could decide, hey, I want to build something else here now that it's three and a half stories. I'm going to tear it down and build something else because it gives me, you know, whatever. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm simply saying by allowing it, I mean, it, that's like saying we're making up a rule that only applies to the stop and shop lot. So of course we say things that only apply to one lot because we want to make sure the person who ends up eventually owning that lot adheres to the rules that we want, not makes up their own and comes in with a, get asked for a special permit and gets it. All I'm saying is if we're asking the town to agree to this, and in, in general, this is not something that they want. The average person in the town does not want this. That has been the feedback. So when we're asking them to do it, I think we should eliminate the special permit. Because what you're saying is, unless it's with a special permit, meaning you come before the planning board or the zoning board and you ask for a change and we like your development, so we'll give it to you. That's just my opinion. And again, I'm only one person. So, but you're asking me what I would, you know, we're, we're just, I thought the point of this was to discuss what each person would and would not support and how they thought they're, I mean, I, that's the feedback I gave to Rich as well. I sent him an email with all my changes in it because I thought that's what we were supposed to do. So. Right. So just to clarify, your inclination is to have a hard cap. Yes. And if you think if you think that 16 is too low, I'm I'm not fine with it because what I think personally has no bearing on what my suggestion for this board is. Like I said, personally, I don't support it. But as far as being on this committee, I think you should have a hard cap. If you don't think 16 is enough, then have it be 18. If you're worried 18 isn't enough, then have it be 20. But whatever it is, make that the final decision. Because I think when you leave it up to the planning board or the zoning board that's going to be here in five or 10 years, they're not going to have the same thought process that we have. So I just, that's my opinion. I, I think they'll actually have a better thought process than us because they'll have all the facts on our proposal. I think going based off what Aaron had to say, you know, there's, there's discretion to this. This isn't just, you know, the zoning board or planning board doesn't just, you know, throw a dart and say, Oh yeah, you know, 30 units looks good. There's, there's a lot of facts that go behind this. And, and I think trying to sit back here, you know, we, we can't, you can't regulate down to everything. I think you got to leave some up to the board and, and the public input that goes on, during those uh, public meetings. I'm fine with the flexibility of, uh, of the board. 
but I, I do think it's really important uh, if this is going to be the approach of that you have a really frank and honest discussion of what that number is. OK, in other words, if it's not 16 per acre anymore, it is now X. OK, and what is that number? OK, based on and and coming with half truths of what it is today versus what it might be based on what all indications are that it's going to be the title five regulation. Well, then what's that number? And why aren't we talking about that? Right, all, all good points. Any other board members have any thoughts on this one before we move on? Uh, from my perspective, you know, the, the, I think the first thing that we outlined as far as the scope of this board was to be able to include additional flexibility to be able to have developers come in and propose projects to us. If they're ridiculous projects, we have people who are appointed to these review committees to make the decisions on behalf of the town that the town elects and in some cases appoints uh, to make those decisions and use that level of discretion. I think that by putting in these parameters that include more flexibility for special permits, We've achieved that. Um, I think Josh is the one who identified the importance of having that aspect of flexibility uh, to ensure that we actually achieve our goal instead of just putting out some new parameters that once again, nobody will be able to fit into. That all being said, and you know, even coming from a former planning board member, I, I agree with the idea of including a range that's allowable by right, 16 units per unit per acre, whatever that number may be, then setting up a separate range for a special permit approval with a hard cap for a maximum for the lot size. I think that if that appeases people and helps them to feel better about putting this into place, that's a reasonable step that we could consider to be able to bridge that gap. Um, at this point, you know, we've talked in circles around this stuff for almost a year at this point, or even more than a year. Um, I think we need to start bridging some of these gaps. Um, and I think that's a good way to try to do this. I would welcome that, uh, a, a formula, a, this lot provides this. And if you combine it with this lot, the number changes to this. Clearly defined, that's all. So is there uh, consensus that we need to have really two pieces then, you know, a, a by right ratio and a, a special permit ratio with a cap. I got Rich, I'm not sure we're looking for a consensus tonight. We're just collecting discussion items so that when we have our detailed discussion, we can come with data and conversation to make our decisions, right? Mm -hmm. but all, of, all of the notes, all of the comments made tonight, I've tried to capture here in my notes, so. Okay. I think we need to move on to setbacks at this point. Got uh, four items left, so, and a okay. half an hour. Okay. All right, so the setbacks, again, you know, the originally proposed was to keep the 50 foot setback requirement. Um, and again, the review of the planning board and the, basically we're gonna keep the proposals to keep that, uh, that requirement, so. Um, I mean, we can get into the discussion of this one. It plays into a little bit of what Chris is asking. Again, I think we need to look at the map, but uh, I don't think there was uh, too much pushback on this one in particular, so. Anyone care to comment? You're discussing only the, the feed for the setback, correct? Yes. You want to just lower? Would it be feasible, or, or you know, does it work to just lower it and say it's it's thirty feet in in the B one area? Well, this is this is the separation of the commercial building from a residential lot, right? So, um, in the in the few cases where the borders of the B one the B one district border residential lot, this is. This is what impact, this is how far that building needs to be away from that residential lot that's outside of the district. Okay. So my argument is the same that I made the last time, which is if in fact this is limited to only a couple of lots that we're 
discussing in this whole project, then then why do we need to give that 20 feet to a commercial developer versus that sole resident being me? I, I thought I didn't realize that this is this this is the same discussion about removing those houses on Boardman. Are those? Oh uh, no! But I just uh, I about uh, like one ninety four Main Street as an example. Uh, so uh, that that setback would therefore directly affect me. Right. Uh, so okay. and again, you know, it's a small triangle. Who cares? Uh, but I care. So, right. so this is the setback that only pertains to a property that butts up to a residential. So this say wouldn't pertain to the stop and shop lot or the one across from Walgreens. Right. Uh, so I don't know the answer to that. It would uh, any property that abuts the residential district. I and mean, we could look at the map, but Chris's point is taken. He, you know, his property on abuts the commercial district and he's in the residential district. I thought we the, the sticking point the sticking the sticking point on this item was that we were going to clarify that this does not qualify for properties across the street. Right. right. I think yeah, and John, I'm not across the street from it. Uh, I directly abut it from the rear. Right. Right. So just the, it hasn't been I I think so Josh raised the issue that it could be interpreted as to say across the street it has never been applied that way. It's it's a budding to a budding. So, you know, in Chris and Martha's case, their property directly abuts the commercial property in the district. And there are uh, a few, there are other properties in that situation, but not. So the ones that are on Main Street that are across the street from the B1 and Main Street is in between. We have not applied it there because that's the front. We could clarify that. But I think we're going to just keep it the way it is. It's 50 feet. If somebody wants to go less, they got to go through a special permit process. We're not reducing it. I misunderstood. I thought this was saying it was reducing it. If it's keeping it at the 50, I'm happy with that. Uh, but I do think the across the street issue should be resolved in the wording. Yeah, it, it is to keep it the way it is. The only that change that went through was just to make it a part of the planning board process permitting wise. So it was with the same, you know, under that same umbrella, but not to reduce it. All right, let's keep moving. Okay. Shared parking. Well, can we just one second before you move on? Underneath on, on the discussion page, I think this is why I was um, confused as to which part we were discussing. Under the discussion page, um, underneath the setback area that we just discussed, it says, consider changing the district boundary. The sites with residential houses should not be included. This is what I was speaking of. The fact that those two lots on Boardman Street are in the B1 district, which means they could be commercial. And I, I disagree with that. I think they should be removed from the, you know, the the borders and they should be part of the residential street. So that's a, but that's under here. So I just want to make sure, it, are we discussing that? Well, I mean, I, 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 we move that on or is that in a different spot? Because we, in the, the first issuance of this board, uh, it was agreed that we wouldn't discuss changing the boundaries of the border. Um, I mean, I suppose we can reopen that conversation if we wanted to, um, but it was discussed in that first year and, I think everybody felt pretty strongly that we didn't want to get into uh, uh, <clears throat> redefining the boundaries of the border. Well, I hate to muddy the water, but uh, I would say it seems pertinent now more than ever. So I think to echo uh, Chris's comment, I think, it, I think it is pertinent. I think that it should be discussed. I don't think, I think it should be kind of on that other list, if you will, like my whole idea of maybe having inner core versus, you know, like that section of our discussion, not right here just yet, but keep in mind of this provision. Uh, yeah, and I, again, I'll just argue that, you know, that the mission of the committee is to 
redefine potential uses and changes to the zoning for the existing district. It's not to redefine the district or to change the purpose of the district. So. Nope, agreed. But uh, if you're going to include it, uh, then you've got to take the implications that come along with that, I guess. I, that's the point I was getting at. If let's let's just say, for example, if we don't remove those two lots that are on a residential street that are only included in this area because they butt up to the corner, I think you're setting yourself we're setting ourselves up for failure because if those two lots could be built with three and a half story apartment buildings and you know parking and traffic you're going to have all of the residents on boardman street oppose it and we know from experience when a group of people in a neighborhood or a street get together to oppose something it generally works we, we've seen uh, that so i disagree so, just real i, I quick, disagree sorry. i think that when that uh, a project like that comes forward and that zoning is in place there will be very little that residents will be able to do to stop it because it will be a by right project. Uh, mm -hmm. It will conform with the zoning. Uh, it, there won't be a problem with it. Uh, and there'll be very little that can be done about it, Aaron. But this, this uh, is another- I, I see you rolling your eyes, uh, but I, ha I have to say, you, you dismiss that out of hand uh, and, and I'll be left, we will be left to, to live with that. So it's gotta be part of the discussion. We could we certainly discuss it. I mean, we're here. It's a public meeting, and it's it's on there. And we'll certainly dive into it. When we get into the, the detailed discussions. Uh, again, again, just point out that next it, meeting. Well, actually, this one will be probably a little bit later if we look at the schedule. It depends on how we organize them. But uh, but I, I, again, you need to look at the map here to recognize that the size of those lots is it, you know those lots are tiny in comparison to the rest of the district. So there's no way you could put a three and a half you know story building on those lots. So it's, Aaron, it's what if it's combined it. with other lots that it directly abuts? Yep, that's again, that is a possibility, correct. Um, okay, so that's why we are here is to discuss the possibilities and uh, the impact of them. Uh, so uh, again, I'm not letting it go. We got to look at it. All right. All right. I'm not suggesting we should let it go. I, we'll, we'll bring it up in our detailed conversation with the map and talk about the possibilities. I, I do just want to Aaron, can, I, can I ask a quick question, Eric? Aaron? I look forward to that meeting. Uh, Chris, can I ask you a question? Yes. The owners of those two lots, are you, do you know them? I do not. Okay. Here's my hesitation to moving forward with something like this. Discussing the rezoning of property that's owned by residents is something that should probably, if not be initiated by them, at least be inclusive of them. Um, I think, Aaron, to your point that we were very clear about the fact we did not want to redistrict or talk about changing the lines. We wanted to more define what the vision was for what was existing. However, I think that some of the scope of this conversation is creeping into our vision for this district may differ from what our vision for those two lots is. I don't think that we're necessarily looking for our vision for the B1 as a whole to start leaking its way down Boardman Street. Uh, I don't know if that was something we ever really even dove into, to tell you the truth. Uh, so I think that that discussion does have a place in what we're talking about here. But like I said, I would be very uncomfortable with us making a determination on zoning changes that could impact the value of one's property uh, without having those individuals be included in the conversation. So that's just my opinion. No, I agree with Kevin completely. So to that point, uh, I agree 100% with that. Uh, it is the most difficult conversation to have. Uh, talking about uh, values and finances with anyone, I can't think of anything more intimate. Uh, and therefore, they, I mean, there's my reasoning why, no, I haven't gone and discussed, uh, you know, the potential value of their property with them. Um, but I think as the B1 committee, you know, your obligation it was to sort of bring these people that we are having this discussion about to the table. Um, has anyone reached out to these people? Um, you know, where these lots are so integral in this part? Uh, has anybody found out, you know, like, I'm sorry, but uh, they are the linchpin to this corner. 
Uh, so to I, act like they're, they're not there, I don't, I don't know. I get lost. I, I certainly understand that I think that those people should be at the table, but they, they purchased those properties knowing what zoning they were in. And, and you and the abutters also purchased your property knowing what zoning they were next to. So I, I guess that would be one of my points. What, what would that be? That, that you knew that where you were purchasing your home was potentially next to property that could be developed in a different way. Right, but my understanding is that's what this discussion we're having right now is, is changing that parameter. Yes, uh, that's correct, but I agree with Kevin. Yeah, that so that's why we're discussing it. Property with the, maybe the potential for developing it down the road. You know, so that's, I agree with Kevin, we can't rezone them and, and make their property worth less. You're potentially rezoning them and making their property worth more. Mm. I think I think the I, I think the the better path forward on this particular topic is that um, so these are the two properties 14 and 20 Borman that we're talking about here to have as a topic discussion on the agenda and then we can have the property owners opportunity to kind of participate in the discussion because I have and they might be fine with changing it, but I think fundamentally um, it's important to be able to provide them the opportunity to, to weigh in and, and let their voices be heard with, um, with the committee. Because, and I understand your point, Chris, but in all due respect to your point, they might have a different opinion about their own property and, you know, would want to do their own kind of homework and say, yeah, it's fine. Or, or, or maybe not so. Right. So, um, so I think we should have a discussion on it for sure. It's great. Um, as well as this particular property, if you see my uh, arrow right here, this property owner had approached me previously during our discussion that they would like to be put into the B1 zone and they're not presently. So, um, and I told them at that time that, you know, maybe there's a time to be able to discuss that, but. Which one was that, Rich? I can't see it. 224 right here. Thank you. So, um, you know, maybe as a subset of this, or at least th these two properties have come up, I know, as through this process. And then the, and then the mom and the daughter did approach me directly about this property too. So at least perhaps it'd be worthwhile for the B1 committee to hear from all three and, and listen. And I'll be honest that that property makes more sense than the other two. Yeah. So, it, so it may be, um, And I don't, and, and I know, yeah, let, let's, I don't disagree. I mean, th this, this, this district was born many, many years ago and, but that doesn't mean it can't change one way or the other, so. Chris, if you don't mind me asking, you said you were direct to butter to 194 main, which property is yours? They're 30. Uh, Rich can point it out. Yeah, that. so you see I, I'm along that. There's that skinny cart path uh, that separates me from kids' place. Uh, and I sort of tuck okay. up against that. Oh, right. Uh, again, points made. We'll take them into consideration when we deep dive on this subject and We'll move on. Uh, so this, I think that I think the committee needs to have a conversation about uh, expanding its uh, its discussion items or not too. So we'll make a note of that. Okay. All right. Parking. Are we on parking. We are on shared parking.
All right, so um, uh, basically the proposal was to keep the existing 30% uh, parking reduction um, by special permit approval. And the proposal is essentially to keep the same. Um, I don't think, uh, I don't think the shared parking was a concern. It's, it's a pretty common one in discussions. I think the, the discussion was actually around changing parking from 1.5 to one, which is a later item. So, uh, I don't know if anyone wants to discuss the shared parking at this point in time, since it's our topic. Uh, but, um, Wasn't there some Tables pushback open. from advisory, Susan, on this one? Yeah, I added that in the discussion document. I don't know if I put my comments in the right place, but I, I added that in as an advisory comment. They were concerned based on what's happening in Mansfield. That was what had come up. Right. And that's also what I wrote. Um, again, I had sent my changes to Rich before he sent out the thing that said edit the documents, which is why I wrote and said, you want me to edit a document that then someone else is going to come in and edit behind me. But I had already sent all of my um, input, so to speak, to Rich separately. I, I wasn't aware that you anyone wanted it to be sent to everyone. So I apologize for that. But um, the shared parking is going to be a huge issue. One, to pass, you know, to get support from the advisory board, as well as to pass it at, in, at town meeting. Um, there's evidence from the issue in Mansfield that um, the reason commercial businesses aren't going in there is because there's not enough parking for their people, for their customers. There's plenty of residential parking, but there wasn't enough for additional co commercial parking. So now those commercial buildings, he that developer wanted to change them to, um, to thing to businesses that would be beneficial to his tenants, meaning common areas, um, you know, a gym or a workout room or a laundromat that would be only used by the tenants of the apartment building. Um, and I think that that is actually a huge issue and that we need to address in this somewhere. We need to say that the businesses or the commercial aspect of this must be commercial that is beneficial to the whole town, meaning the whole town can use it meaning it's a restaurant, it's an ice cream shop, it's a dance studio, it's a doctor's office, it's a dentist's office. It is not a gym or a laundromat for the apartment complex. That is not stated anywhere in here. And in addition to the problem with parking, I think that also needs to be stated in here that, it, that we're not speaking of the bottom commercial building can just be a big open space that your tenants are using. That's not the, that's not what our intent was for this. And I think we need to make sure we put that in there so that it's not a loophole that a developer can get around. Does anybody have a, a source citation for this Mansfield project? I'm unfamiliar completely, I apologize. Um, actually, Rich mm -hmm. sent it to the whole B1 committee, I believe in February, January or February. Thank you. In my email. Yeah, yeah so it, was, it was an article. I still have it in mind. If, if someone doesn't have it or they deleted it, I can certainly forward it, but it was forwarded to the B1 committee. Yeah. So, yeah, it was an article that was written in the Sun Chronicle about. Yeah. Really, Got it. Thank you. And, and fortunately, Kevin, it's the one that also included negative comments about the advisory board, which I thought was pretty unfortunate, but. Um, either way, the article specifically cites issues that the advisory board had brought up um, in the past. Just for the record, the comments of the advisory board were not mine. Oh, of course not. No, I know that. All right. Just want to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think we, so that when it comes to just to touch real quickly and then we'll move forward, there's really, there's two provisions within the zoning bylaw when it comes to parking there's one which is this one here which is the waiver for a reduction in the parking where you have to reserve the parking area and then there's a completely different section of the bylaw in the parking section of bylaw which does allow for a reduction in the required parking by special permit um, which can be done on a permanent basis so we'll need to kind of rectify this at some point 
Um, but I think the consensus was, uh, or at least I got the feeling that we were, we wanted to keep at the moment parking at 1.5 per dwelling unit as it is today and not go down to one right now. We're getting to that one, Rich. Don't jump ahead. All right. So shared parking sounds like we need to have more conversation on it, which I'm sure is coming. So after shared parking comes land use, uh, which uh, ties into the specific uses allowed on the land. And then uh, we had uh, delved into a attempt to define a primary and secondary building, uh, which there was much discussion on. Uh, there was also the requirement to add 15% uh, affordable housing, right? So there's some, there were some hot buttons in this one. So uh, keep scrolling down a little bit more, Rich. Mm -hmm. um, right. So uh, the, the proposal here is is to um, well again keep keep the the requirement to have mixed use development includes residential and commercial. Uh, Add, add language defining primary buildings as those with having street frontage. So in other words, you could have multiple primary buildings. Uh, uh, again, the, the topic here is about having uh, outbuildings behind the primary buildings, right? So you I could add language requiring 65% of the lot street uh, frontage to have primary building frontage, again, to make sure that your primary building is uh, taking up a majority of your street frontage and uh, contributing to the pedestrian environment of the town, right? And in the event that a lot borders multiple streets, this would apply uh, to each street. So you'd have multiple multiple front frontages, right? And then add language requiring the ground floor of primary buildings to have uh, no residential units, to be a minimum of 80% commercial or retail and uh, or a pertinent uses to the commercial or retail space. And again, we could get to something like what Susan is suggesting is here. Maybe we need to say that the commercial and retail space is to the benefit of the town and not to the residential units above. Um, could add language defining secondary buildings as those not having street frontage. Uh, add language allowing secondary buildings to be 100% residential and then add a requirement for uh, 15 to 20% affordable housing. Why, I have a why, question. Why is this question? Why is that secondary building an issue it's important for the B1 district? Why is it important to have a secondary building? Why is yeah that particular line of, of allowing the secondary building? Right. So I, if, I, if I if I remember the if I remember the history correctly, Ed, it's that the um, developers were trying to figure out how to maximize the residential units. You know, based on previous discussion, that's where the money seems to be today. So in order to meet the intent of the zoning guidelines, they were going to provide the commercial uses in the primary building. And then the second building on the site could be 100% uh, residential. I was, I was trying to visualize what the secondary building is. Is this townhouses behind a, a main building? I mean, what is the secondary building? That's what I couldn't understand. I believe there's a proposal uh, before the town now uh, on Main Street uh, that somewhat reflects uh, what this would look like, Rich? Yeah, they're, uh, yes, I mean, technically it hasn't been submitted, but yeah, um, which had uh, mixed use, so it had a, along the Main Street commercial first floor apartments above and then um, duplex units to the rear of the site. Almost exactly what we were asking for in this zoning. Yeah. So the question, and this kind of, well, I know maybe it's be another meeting, but um, this gets back to the whole, some of the concerns that had been raised in, um, in the what if potential scenarios that have been discussed through this process of this whole, this, this really, I think, had a lot of uh, a lot of negative feedback related to it, specifically, you know, primary, secondary, defining, and so forth and so on. That that's where the idea or potential idea was. Listen, if you have a core where 
this is not a good option as a potential development, then don't allow it. Just make it mixed use. It's um, residential, a commercial first floor, residential above. If there's some outer properties within the B zone where it may make more sense, it, it may fit much better, then allow something in that scenario, but don't apply it across the whole district because maybe Provide that's- Provide a little balance. Right, that, that's really not what, you know, the idea of having like what Mr. Chipman's proposal is on 201 Main, that might be perfectly fine. It may look well and it may assimilate well, you know, but the property that's on Liberty Lane and then the property that's on uh, between, you know, Liberty Lane and Main Street, we may not want secondary residential, but we do want to see a, a, at least all commercial or at least commercial first floor residential above, you know, define that core a little bit more like a traditional core. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So it defines the primary secondary as 65% of the frontage on the road, leaving the remainder could be a secondary building. Is that correct? With no commercial. The secondary. Yeah, it could be. But the secondary building, even though it's a secondary and lesser, it would still be on the frontage, correct? No, it can't be on the frontage. It has to be. So 65% of the frontage would be used and the other wouldn't be buildable? Yeah, let me revisit this. Make sure I got this. 60... Unless there was a second primary building. Yeah. Chris, have... right. That's So that's what I'm asking. So you could theoretically have 65% primary building on the frontage, commercial on the front, and then residential on the remaining percentage on the frontage. No, if it's on the frontage, it counts as a primary building. That, okay, so it intact. would have to set back, uh, it would have a further setback from the frontage. It would have to abut, yeah. like, that seems really limiting. I think yeah, I believe. So I believe that was the intent, yes. Yeah, 100%. So the secondary building would have to be set back, not occupy the prim the frontage, the primary building front. Why don't, why don't we just say that you can't have any residential on the ground floor? Front, back, side, doesn't matter. Everything has to be mixed use. It has to be commercial on the bottom and residences on the top. I think the answer to that, Susan, is there's lots where that just doesn't make sense. Like for instance, the, the lot that we're talking about, um, I'm blanking on the, the address of it, but it's where Borks is now, right? That, yeah, that, proposal, that, that proposal has buildings in back. It, it wouldn't make any sense to have commercial off the street frontage. I mean, it just would never lease. Right. It, correct. I'm just trying to figure out how much street frontage we're potentially losing. Uh, I gotta think that I don't. In other words, if sixty-five percentage is the requirement, and then the emphasis is to put the bulk of residential in the back, uh, then right. And I, I, Chris, I'm not. For, I would. No. I guess I would just maybe say that a different way. I don't know that you're losing it. I mean, I mean, the street frontage is taken up by a number of things. But it could be taken up by sidewalks or driveways or green area or you know potentially open space is created between buildings right so um i i don't think we're losing commercial space as much as we're we're shaping downtown i think <clears throat> the overall intent is to have and we'll we we'll got to go back i mean i just want to revisit it as a as it's presently defined, but that along the street frontage, that envelope area would have to be either all commercial or commercial first floor residential above. And then you couldn't fill in front until there was a building in front. So you couldn't have a, a secondary residential building occupying the back of the site with open frontage, if you will. Right, so Rich, again, in the effort of moving this meeting forward, we're, we're summarizing this, trying to get everybody's, you know, upfront opinions on it. 
Yep. Uh, we've got one item left and then there's there's two big items I think we need to get to here still, which aren't specific items that we need to talk about how we're going to edit documents going forward. And yep. then we need to talk about spokespeople for these items so that we can get okay. to the detailed conversations that the public so okay. uh, is so looking yep. for. Uh, I think okay. we are too. So, um, okay. so unless anybody else has any comments to add to this, it is it's a very complicated item and it will take some uh, attention going forward. Uh, I think we've reached our limit here on this one, right? All right, so the last one is the parking. And again, uh, there's been much discussion around uh, a zoning change from a requirement of 1.5 spaces uh, per unit to one. And uh, it, this is taken in contact with the shared parking assembly. And, uh, you know, the MAPC has made their feelings known on this, that the, the general amount of parking across the state and the country is coming down, uh, that it, it adds potential flexibility to developments and there's nothing stopping a developer from putting in two spots per unit if, if they think that's what they need to support their development. Um, but you know, this is, this is another item that we should talk through and, uh, and come to some recommendation on. Agree. Everybody's done talking. I, I just, I'm, I'm not sure if I should insert comments or just wait until the next time when we're inserting comments. Honestly, that's where I'm at. I'm just confused as to what we're doing right now. I know. All right. So uh, I guess I'll answer that question, Janine, from my point of view. Uh, so now I think what we need to do is we need to try and identify spokespeople for each of these items. So we can begin to drive these conversations and get to the details and the decisions that need to be made. If you, look at the calendar, the, the letters are tied, the letters as they're listed here are tied to meeting dates, right? So A, B, C, right? D, E, and F, or I guess I left some out, or maybe they got erased, so uh, D and E. Yeah, so A, B, C, D and E, and then F, G, and H, right? So mm -hmm. the, the goal would be to do a deep dive on those specific items led by the spokespeople for those meetings. Uh, and then to come to some agreement, hopefully on them at the end of the meeting, and then on the end of July, come to an agreement on what our warrant's going to look like, right? So I think we need to do two things before we get into that, what I would, you know, would call the working sessions. Um, and I think one of them is, is agree on this process of editing, noting uh, our working documents, particularly to the SCUD document. And the second is, is to try and get people to volunteer for uh, managing one of these items, if not more. You right now you have um, E, F, and G for July sixth. That's that. Assuming we are not on quarantine still, that's <laughs> my weekend. Right, so move it to the thirteenth. Right, we'll move it out a week. Or you can move it sooner by a week. Yeah, either either way. Yeah. Um, I, I just speaking for myself. Once the quarantine's lifted, if it is lifted by July, I will not be in town. So sooner would be better for me, but. Um, cause I think I'm, you know, like I told you guys, I, I leave for the Cape 4th of July. Um, it's not that I absolutely cannot come back, but it'll be dependent on whether or not we have company, whether or not I have childcare on the Cape, because I have a four-year-old and I don't always have my husband work. So he's not always there to be able to watch. Her. And my so two it, children both have jobs. So not as easy to come back. So if you have any major objections to moving that the July the week of the 6th July to the week of 29th June? So long as it's on, not on the 29th, I believe that's when our town election has been moved to. Right. Otherwise I'm good. So Rich, let's, let's move that July 6th week meeting up to the week of June 29th and maybe make a note that it can't slide into July. All right, so- um, You hope to praise Susan's on the Cape then too. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, does anybody have any? Right. There's no issue. I'll, I can I can come to all of them, but I just wanted to be fully transparent. And you know, if I get assigned one, I would prefer it to not be F G and H, simply because if God forbid I ended up have you know being on the Cape and something happened, I wouldn't want to skirt my duties. So I would like if you're going to assign me one, that for it to be A, B, or C, just so that it's done or my my portion is done earlier. Okay, so while we're on that topic, um, well, 
do we have any volunteers or do we need to discuss about pulling names out of a hat or uh, any feelings on how we should go about this? Or... When you say A, B, and C and um, F, G, and H, could you just... So they tie to the numbers in the executive summary that we were just looking at? No. Oh, let me... Uh... Tie to the letters, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll start at the top, how's that? A. Scale. I, I don't mind. I can take that. I can take any. I can take a, any of A, B, and C. It doesn't matter. I would just prefer, and I don't have a preference on them. That's not the point of this. I'm not picking one that I happen to like for whatever reason. I just would prefer to do it sooner rather than later in case we're open and I'm on the Cape and I don't, I don't want to be an inconvenience to anyone. I just want to make sure that I have done my part and I am here for what we have planned. So if no one has an objection, I would like to pick one that's A, B, or C, or be assigned one. Unless someone else, unless there's enough for everybody and you don't need me, and then that's fine as well. Because I haven't been here since the beginning. So if you'd rather it go in order of seniority, that's fine too. We left out plan multi-lot development. That's because it's just removing the language. So it's worth noting. Uh, that's I. Uh, it's actually B. Oh, all right. So it's going to be okay. Never mind. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, well, we have a volunteer. It sounds like. Well, why don't I mean one of two ways? If no one else wants to volunteer, why don't you take it in order of seniority and see if they want to pick one specifically, so that we make sure that people are happy with the selection that they have and if that doesn't work then you can assign them as the chair you know i mean i, I don't know how do we establish seniority i mean i think so that would seniority be is uh aaron yourself kevin devin janine and ed we're here in the beginning Right, so Eileen, are, we, are we all one or you're all top seniority all right so that's not going to work about, does anybody have a strong opinion that they they have one that they don't want to own um, i don't want the building height one so Devin doesn't want that one anybody else have one that they don't want uh because it comes in at the end and i have a fairly stacked schedule heading into our springtown meeting I will take parking H if that if nobody has any objections. Sold. One day. I would do A. You want A? And then Susan you need something from the beginning, right? Or Susan can take a. I mean, I mean, I can take building height if if Ed wants building scale. I have no preference. I'm just going to do my. I mean, I'm, this isn't about my opinion on which one I like. I'm just going to do the research and be able to answer the questions. I thought that's what we had decided. So, it's I'm going to put my opinion in on everything else. So I don't need one that I necessarily agree or disagree with. I just will take okay. whatever one you want me to have. So. So Susan has C at the moment. Okay. I got it. Janine, right. you know, Ed just said A. Yeah. And I'll take B, Rich, because it's cheating to take it. So cheating. I will take another one because I took B. You took yeah. B is planned multi-lot development, which is simply removing language from the from the text, right? From the text. So it's not really a discussion point. It's so, clean, it's it's editorial work, right? So <clears throat> So Janine and Eileen, do you have a... I have no preference. I think they're all sound like a lot of fun. Can I take uh, E, it's the setback? Okay. I'm sorry, did he say D? E. 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 Okay. Oh, see, again, I heard one D and one E. Right, so we've got residential density, shared parking and land use left. Devin, can you repeat your re request? E for setback. Okay, thank you. 
Mm -hmm. I'm just making notes just in case. No, I, I agree. Yep. Make sure I have everybody written down correctly. D. Who wants D? I don't care. That's fine. I can take it. Why don't Why don't I take land use? Because it's probably the messiest one. Well, let's get Eileen and Janine signed up first. Oh, oh, I thought I was. You guys can take whatever you want. <laughs> Feel free. All right. So Janine's got residential density. Okay. And Eileen's got shared parking. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for making that relatively easy. Could you just clarify exactly what we're doing with the, each of us? <laughs> yes. I, it's, well, my proposal is the discussion document, which will begin to track this item. So it, you're, each one of us becomes the de facto uh, administrative assistant for each of these items. We're going to track the conversation, the frequently asked questions, the, you know, the, the discussion points, et cetera. So there's a history of the discussion that we can share with people that have the questions. Then when it comes time for town meeting and we're all in the, the format similar to what the advisory board has, there's a table set up front. I think we'll take places up front as a committee. And as people have questions specific to the warrant items, the, the spokespeople will speak to their particular item. Okay. Okay. I think right. that would just help with a being prepared, like he said, with a list of frequently asked questions that you've already prepared an answer for. So we're not caught off guard with something as well as be not having each other talk over each other or what usually happens in this situation is everyone stares at everyone, each other, not knowing who's supposed to speak or what, who should say what. I think it just eliminates that. And it also creates less work for the majority because you're only really tied to one question that you need to be prepared to discuss versus preparing to discuss all of them. Right. I, I Can I ask also, Rich to uh, just go over the list sure. and the assignments? Sure. So hopefully I got it all right. So A is going to be Ed. B is Aaron. Rich, uh, why don't you read what the uh, topic is, too, because I don't know if people necessarily have the tie-up. Thank right. you. Sorry. Building scale A is for Ed. <laughs> B is in plan multi-lot development is Aaron. C, building height is for Susan. D is residential density is Janine. Uh, setback E is Devin. F is Eileen for shared parking. G land use is Aaron. And H for parking is Kevin. Parking is as far as parking required. Right. So as the commissioner, I would ask, again, if we switch back to the calendar, I think A, B, and C are on the docket for the next meeting. So if, if Ed, myself, and Susan can come prepared to lead discussions on those individual items, I think that would be great. Um, you know, Use the discussion document that started it and edit it as you see fit uh, to track the conversations, including tonight's, and, and we'll go forward from there. Um, and I, I think... I, I think I think this will help with the second item that we wanted to get through, which is editing the Google Docs, right? So if now that we have spokespeople, each section of the discussion item is editable by, is led by the spokesperson, right? So send comments to that spokesperson and they can be included in, in the section. I think the rest of the documents, the calendar, the executive summary, et cetera, could be left to myself and Rich uh, and and Janine offered to help with the executive summary. So, you know, send send comments, send comments our way, and we'll incorporate them and and edit and keep the documents. So that seemed like a reasonable proposal to everybody. Yes. I think it. Yes, it does. And then I think if there's if there's things that need to be 
needed between now and next meeting on those topics, A, B, and C. Just let me know and I'll be, I can work with Josh and we can provide additional information if necessary. Aaron, um, I'm, I apologize. I was actually trying to, when you said it was in the next meeting, I wanted to make sure I wrote down the things I remembered from this discussion now that I was assigned it. <laughs> um, so I wasn't actually listening to what you said. I heard you say something about Janine offering to help edit the list and and did, was that okay with everyone? And we should send something, but I'll be honest with you. I was half listening because I was writing, not on purpose, just because yeah. when you're doing something, you're kind of, you can't really hear. Yeah. So did I was, you, I was suggesting yeah. that, I was suggesting that the way we, um, I just lost everybody. Is everybody still there? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I was yes. suggesting that the way we edit, there was a question about how we're going to edit the Google Docs going forward, right? And uh, the recommendation was, is that now that we have spokespeople, the discussion document can be edited by the spokesperson. Okay. The other documents, the calendar, the executive summary, I think could be handled by myself and Rich. You so send your comments to us and we'll incorporate them, you know, as a editorial effort. Okay. Um, and is one person going to take over as the de facto proof proofer for all things grammar and spelling. Um, Cause you know, if we're gonna make the executive summary public and if we're going to make the other document public we would obviously need those to be proved within yeah, our- I, I, think, I think the uh, editorial group has, has been, is me, Janine and Rich. Okay, okay. Can I ask the question Aaron? Are, are we? I know there was some discussion at one time about only talking about a core and then the, the outer B one. Are we talking about the core only, or are we limit? Are we not talking about the outer B one, or are we talking about both? Are we talk about each one of our categories. Uh, I, that's a good question, Ed. I think you got to. I think as we get through them, we need to talk as if there might be an inner or an outer or a large site, small site topic. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Section I. H and I. Yeah. That's fitting because section, yeah. Um, right. Well, I think that gets us through what uh, Rich and I had identified as the agenda tonight. Is uh, we'll just go around real quick to see if anybody has any uh, items to new business items. Rich, you good? Ed? No, I'm not saying thing. Eileen. Devin? All set. Josh? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've said little this evening kind of purposefully because I think that it's good for you all to be um, pushing this conversation forward uh, and getting taking ownership of it. I, I would agree with the comment made recently that the a discussion about the uh, boundary of a potential sub-district within the uh, town center district would be a good one and could have influence on all of the other topics. So that just might, in terms of how the agendas of discussion are being organized, it, it, the discussion of sub-district boundaries might be one of, one of, want to be one of the lead discussion items. Sounds good, thanks. So I guess that Rich and I are gonna to have to have a conversation. We may need to change A, B and C to a, a, C, and whatever the other appropriate letter is. Because uh, B, again, the planned multi-lot development is kind of a, an easy topic anyway. So we'll let, it, we'll let everybody know on that in short order so we can prepare. Um, Kevin, do you have anything? Nope, just uh, glad to see the tables finally set for us to be able to solidify some of these recommendations and uh, looking forward to the upcoming conversations. Great, Janine? Uh, just in terms of first order of business for editing um, and the cover letter is the latest 
version what is on the Google Doc and I can go there or am I waiting for an email from Rich? I'll double check, but I'm pretty confident the one that's in Google Doc is the one. Okay. Well, let's just let's just say it is the one, Janine, and we'll work from there. All right. I will work. Okay. I forgot to say something. My apologies, Mr. Chair. Oh, you missed your window. We got to go to Susan first, Rich. Okay. <laughs> um, the only thing I had was, um, Rich, I had made. I don't know if you can see them at all, but I'd made a bunch of little notes as we went along for, you know, just general housekeeping things like add a meeting if need be, add sewer to the next meeting agenda. Um, you know, don't forget to add the B1 committee to the website. Do you need me to email you all of these or did you take notes of them as well? I did. I took notes, but if you want to just snap a picture of your notes, just okay. email to me, that would be helpful. Okay. Thank I just wanted to make sure that, you know, yeah. you add everything you needed. It's always good. Helpful to cross check. All right, Rich, back to you. So I did. Uh, I did speak to Blythe about doing the uh, presentation at town meeting, and in turn, I, you know, under committees, and I've got an email out to Jay to see, you know, how much time potentially we could have, and then kind of tailor a presentation for the upcoming town meeting, whenever that might be. So I'm waiting to hear back from him and then I'll share that with the committee. Great. And I guess we shouldn't leave out the public here since they've stuck with us. Uh, Chris and Martha, you guys have anything you want to close with? Nope. Uh, we look forward to the upcoming meetings. Awesome. And uh, Mr. Banta? They're observers. All set. All right. Do right, we have to do a motion to adjourn or? Just turn it off. It's nice to uh, zoom so out. The next meeting is May 18th, correct? And it will be a Zoom meeting? Yes. Well, that's a good point. We're supposed to set that meeting, right? Is that May 18th? That's May what's on the calendar. I just want to make sure that it's the right. Yeah, that's a week of date. So let's make sure that is the right date. The dates on the calendar are a week of date. So let's make sure that is the right date. That's a Monday. Yeah. And it is a Zoom meeting because I don't think the assumption is we'll still be, you know, I think he's, you know, technically it's only till May 4th, but I'm assuming there's going to be new guidelines that come out next week. Yeah, that's a pretty safe assumption. So, yeah. all right. So with the assumption that it's a May 18th meeting and I will be prepared with building height, um, are you going to use this existing link or are you going to send a new one? It'll be the same link. Okay, and if I have any pictures or documents that we need, do you want me to send them to you ahead of time, Rich? Sure. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night.